I wonder, I wonder how many times our, our special guest here joining us had to yell that in the huddle as he broke the huddle at Germantown Academy at the University of Florida, getting ready for a big game in the tournament, or even getting ready for his team to get ready to take on the 76ers. Joining us right now is the majority owner for the New Zealand Breakers, Matt Walsh, local guy, done great, Germantown Academy, University of Florida. And a lot of people don't know, Matt, that you are a majority owner of the team coming into town. First of all, welcome, man. By the way, we're coming to you live from the Bahamas, just to let you know. <laughs> as we're hanging out. Well, uh, I'm sure you guys all needed some of that hangover cure then. And uh, just to, <laughs> to boost your sponsors, I, I think I bought about 150 tickets on the Game Time app this week. So, uh, hey. well, there. But I appreciate you guys having me. Uh, very excited. Now, this is great, man. First of all, how, how did you get involved in the ownership group to uh, be a majority owner for this New Zealand Breakers team? And what was it about this particular team and organization that made you want to get into this, this, this space? Yeah, so I'll save you some of the details. It's a bit of a long story, but I retired from playing in 2015. And I had a young family. I was taking them overseas for nine years. And um, I actually came off a really good year. I was 31 years old. I led the Turkish league in scoring. Um, and I had a conversation with actually somebody who's got a relationship with the Sixers, Jason Levian, who uh, helped put the deal together for Josh Harris back in the day, who was my agent. He married me and my wife. You know, he oversaw it. And I said to him, like, man, you know, I'm thinking about doing something else. And he was the majority owner of DC United at the time, still is. And he was very generous. He said, you know, I think that and something that stuck with me is like, I think your second half of your life is going to be more successful than the first. And I kind of rolled my eyes because at the time I'm like, what am I going to do with my life? And he invited me to come and work with DC United, work with the USL team and kind of learn that side of the business, the, the business, the executive, the ownership. And at the end of 2017, a mutual friend, Jonathan Gavoni, who does a lot of stuff for ESPN, mm -hmm. was working for the Breakers as a consultant, just helping them with their imports. And he came to me and said, hey, uh, this family's incredible. I, I think they're looking to sell. Their kids had grown up. I think this is a great opportunity. Why don't you take a look at it? And to be honest, you know, I'm two years post playing career. I, you know, I was, I was one of the rare basketball players at the time, at least that took care of my money. So I wasn't in a position where I really needed to do anything, but um, I decided, you know what, this is a great learning opportunity. I'll do some diligence. I'll have a look at it. And the more I learned about the league, the more I learned about the team kind of got to a point where I was like, man, I just have to do this. Now that being said, you know, I'd never ran my own business. Um, and I basically was like, this is just something I'm going to do. I came home from doing the diligence, told my pregnant wife, uh, hey, I think, I think you're going to have to pack up because we're going to buy this team in New Zealand. And um, as crazy as that seems, the response I got from most people was even worse. They were like, what is a Philly guy buying a team in New Zealand for? And, you know, I kind of sold them on it. And I was fortunate that I had some good partners who believed in me. I basically did a friends and family raise, signed all the paperwork to buy the team. Uh, basically being like, I'm going to put a whole big chunk of my net worth in this and find some good partners. And uh, it's been a great journey. Seven, this is my seventh year coming on. But um, yeah, sorry if that was a bit long winded, but that's how it all came about. No, so I, building off of that, Matt, I, I guess I'm really interested in that, the, the cultural jump, right? Like I, I think I'm not familiar, sure how familiar you are with uh, Wrexham in the English soccer leagues and that story with, Rob McElhenney and Ryan Reynolds. And I know that they, one of their big challenges was, you know, you're the Americans, you're coming to, you know, this, this town and this club and, you know, how do you change things or not change things? I guess, did you run into any hurdles like that being the, the Philly guy and you played, I think most of your career, if not all of it, you played in, in Europe, right? So it's not like you had real roots there. You're pretty much completely new to the scene down there. Yeah. I mean, besides my, uh, you know, vaunted, run with the Miami Heat where I was, uh, you know, I scored two points and had a cup of coffee in the NBA. I spent my whole career in Europe. Um, I laugh because, yes, I certainly went through some of that. And it's funny you mentioned Ryan and Rob with uh, Wrexham because besides the Breakers, I'm also uh, an owner of a Liga NX team in Mexico and a pickleball team. And we're actually the only Amer we're actually the only minority partners with Wrexham. We partnered with Ryan Reynolds, my partner Sam Porter, and Al Tyler. So we're actually partners with those guys on our Mexican team and Wrexham. So I know their business well. But yeah, I mean, I certainly thought 
oh, I, I'm this American guy. I've got the best of intentions. I'm going to invest a bunch of money in the club. Like we're going to grow this thing. And I got there and we made some changes and I quickly realized that it wasn't going to be all sunshine, sunshine and rainbows. You know, <laughs> I looked at it as like, oh, I'm going to turn this game event into like a Sixers game, into Miami Heat game and make all these changes. And let's just say that first year, the responses were not glowing. I remember I showed up at, at our uh, practice facility for like a members event, a, a season ticket holders event. And it ended up with like a hundred of them outside grilling me with these questions on my intentions. And I get it now because the New Zealand breakers are the only uh, team from New Zealand in the Australian NBL. It's something that, you know, before I bought the team, they had wild success, four championships in 10 years, the Blackwell family, amazing family who invested so much in the community and they were looking at me much like you know like why is this american guy from philly what is his interest here and it took me about two years with my family there to kind of i don't know if prove is the right word but to kind of earn my breaker stripes and um you know now it's funny the same people who are kind of criticizing me that year they're my biggest defenders you know every time we do something and but i really had to buy in and i think i wouldn't have had the success if i wasn't willing to move there with my family and go all in and, you know, really show that I was, I was about the right things. Um, but Oh my God, I can relate to that so much. I mean, it was tough those first few years. And um, you know, when you're a player, you get criticized for how you play. That's fine. You know, I never cared. I, I love going into Rupp arena and having them all chant the craziest stuff you could ever imagine. But as an owner, when you're constantly reading, like, man, what are they doing? What are you doing? It was tough. You know, the first two years was tough, but um, like I said, kind of earned my stripes and now it's been amazing and i can't imagine my life without the breakers i guess going quickly back to your playing career you mentioned that you played mostly overseas but you played in a, a lot of countries from greece spain france slovenia turkey i'm sure i'm probably forgetting a bunch of others what was that experience like getting not only to play in all those different locations but getting you know thrown into all those different cultures yeah, it was amazing. I mean, that's what made the move to New Zealand very easy. Like when me and my family went, because we had lived in Turkey and Greece and all those places you named. Um, but I feel very fortunate. But I, I'd be lying if I said there wasn't a learning curve. Like I had never left the United States uh, besides to go to Canada to play the Raptors when I signed in Greece. And I showed up there. And my first impression was, and you know, this didn't turn out to be true. My first impression was like, man, my high school with Lee Malkioni and Ted Scooches, we could beat this team. And that was more <laughs> just a result. And, you know, I joke with Billy Donovan all the time that he cursed me because I got to see what like the best, highest level of coaching was for three years. And I played for Coach Fennerty at Germantown Academy. And then I played for Lawrence Frank with the New Jersey Nets. And then I went to Europe and I actually had an incredible coach, but I had this mentality I think it's part of why I was you know, successful to a level in basketball. But I had this mentality of like, I belong in the NBA. What am I going to do to get back there? Like, screw everything else. And it took me some time to kind of accept the fact that this was going to be my life. I was going to play in Europe. I had to embrace it. And after that first year and a half, when I really did, I saw my success go up. I saw my happiness go up. Um, and now looking back, I think I'm the most fortunate person in the world. Like I got to live in Greece, Turkey, Spain, France, Italy, these amazing experiences. I have friends from all over the world. Um, but at the time, it, it did take an adjustment. But, uh, you know, like I said, looking back, I don't know who, ha who had it better than me for those 10 years. Matt Walsh joining us here on the PHLY Sixes podcast. Philly guy done well, owner of, majority owner of the New Zealand Breakers, getting ready to take on the Philadelphia 76ers on Monday to start off the preseason game. Matt, how did this game come together? Yeah, so we're one of the unique teams. Um, like when I bought the team, I really wanted to cultivate the connection to the NBA. I looked at it as an opportunity to take the breakers and make it like a real global brand. So this is going to be our sixth, seventh and eighth preseason games over the last five years, which is pretty cool. And then we always try and go out and get a young player. Like we have Cream Lopez, who's the number one international prospect in the world on our roster. We've had four players drafted. So it's a big part of what we want to do. You know, we kind of want we want the breakers to be synonymous with playing NBA preseason games, with having guys drafted. So how it basically works is about a year in advance, I'll contact, you know, NBA teams through the relationships that I have. And I'll say, hey, we're very interested in playing. Do, are there any dates that work? And typically the teams will come back and say either, hey, we're booked out for the next year, the next two years. Let's talk about the future. Or they'll say, you know, two or three days, the October 4th through 7th can work. Can, can you make that work? Um, and then once we kind of have an agreement on a date, 
then the NBA and the NBL have to agree on, you know, all the behind the scenes stuff. But basically how it works is I make a whole bunch of calls to relationships I have with people in the NBA. Um, this is obviously a special one for me. And this came together really late. Like we were supposed to just play the Utah and OKC games. And then when they offered this up, even though it's going to be three games in seven days for our players, I was like, man, I can't pass this up. You know, I grew up, uh, believe it or not, my confirmation name, I grew up going to Catholic school is Clarence because of Clarence Weatherspoon. So I chose, he was my <laughs> favorite awesome. player. So my, my confirmation name is Clarence. I grew up watching Dana Barris, Ron Anderson, um, you know, all these guys. It was, you know, my dad took me to games. The most illustrious era of Sixers basketball, <laughs> <Yeah>. obviously. <Yeah. laughs> I know. I mean, it's funny when I when I tell people that they're like, "Who the hell is Clarence Weatherspoon?" I'm like, "Oh, you wouldn't understand. It was a dark time for the Sixers." <laughs> um, but I grew up going and watching games at the Spectrum, and so for me to come back and you know have this opportunity, it's, it does not feel real. Like even when I go on SeatGeek or Game Time. And we're Ticketmaster, and I look at there's tickets for Breakers versus the Sixers. I'm like, well, I must be living in some alternate reality. So I feel very fortunate. And I will say certain organizations are better to deal with than others. And the Sixers have been absolutely amazing with everything from accommodating me, knowing I'm going to need extra tickets, to making sure the team feels welcome. And I think they recognize how big a deal it is for us um, as an international club coming in. And they've really made us feel welcome. So I'm very grateful to the Sixers organization. You mentioned you mentioned Kareem, uh, who is the top international prospect. I think it's in the, the earliest he would be. He wouldn't be uh, eligible for this draft. It's two years in a row, or two years uh, down the road. But outside of him, there's an obvious Philly connection uh, in Jonah. What else can you tell me about the Breakers and what Sixers fans can expect here when they come to town? Yeah, Kareem's a special guy. I mean, he's only 17 years old. Crazy to think that he's going to be playing wow. meaningful minutes with us. Uh, we get him for two years, which is exciting. The other guys that we've had, like Usman Jang, who's a lottery pick with OKC, and RJ Hampton, uh, Ryan Rupert, who started a bunch of games for the Blazers last year, those guys were with us for a year. And while it's amazing and while you do your best to grow them, it is tough. Like, it is tough to really have an impact. It's almost like you're just trying to boost what they really do well and, and slightly improve their, you know, inefficiencies. And Kareem, we have two years. And I think he's going to be a top five pick. But, you know, in terms of our team this year, we have Jonah Bolden. Um, we signed Taco Fall uh, for the NBA preseason, and we have an option to keep him for the rest of the year, which is pretty exciting. I think he can be a force in our league. We also have Freddie Gillespie on our roster, who's played some NBA games, who's been a two-way guy. Uh, we have Matt Mooney, who spent some time with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Um, and then we've got, uh, you know, some really good local players as well. Mojave King was drafted by the Indiana Pacers two years ago. Um, so, uh, you know, Look, there's a talent gap. It's just the way it is. Uh, you know, with, there's no better league in the world than the NBA. And I believe the NBA is the second best league in the world, top to bottom, especially with, um, you know, all the other stuff that goes with it, production. But there's going to be a talent gap. So for us, you know, when we come and play these NBA games, uh, you know, the Adelaide uh, 36ers beat an NBA team a few years ago. For us, it's like, all right, look, let's, let's continue to work on our stuff. Let's, you know, really make it as competitive as we can, but we know that top to bottom, you know, that one, there's probably going to be 18 or 20 guys on the Sixers roster with training camp. It's going to be tough for us, especially, uh, you know, the, the Joel Embiid's and uh, Maxi's and Paul George's of the world. But uh, we've got a really good team. We're 2-0 and in the NBL. Um, we've been a playoff team the last two years. So, uh, you know, we're going to do our best to, to give the fans in Philly a really good show. Man, I, I know we're all a little older now, but I think you disappointed a lot of your fans, man. The curly hair is not there, no headband <laughs> like you used to when you used to play. That was a staple, man. What are you doing? Well, well let me tell you, they'd be even more disappointed if they saw what's under this hat, okay? So, uh, you know, unfortunately, I'm, I'm 41 now. And yes. uh, if I, I tell everyone who makes that comment, like, look, if I still had those curls, you'd all know it. Trust me. I, I, would, I would still be rocking that, man. You know, my son likes to joke about my hairline, but – my son, who's 12, he's carrying on the torch. He, he wears a headband when he plays, and he's pretty Perfect. good. But, um, yeah, that's as best as I can do nowadays, unless I, you know, I go back to Turkey and get the hair treatment, which, you know, I don't, I don't think I'm up for that. So, Hey, man, we got, a restoration, man. we got a restoration <laughs> sponsor here, man. We, we can go together. It's all good. We need a sponsor. Don't, don't I need, we need a sponsor. Yeah. Let's get a sponsor to get us in there. Don't worry. Well, listen, I also know this about you, man, is that you are a basketball junkie. Stepping into this new role that you're in as the majority owner, dealing with contracts and signing players, trying to set these games up and, and such, 
but you're also a basketball fan still, and you follow the NBA. What do you think about your hometown team overall? You mentioned Maxi, George, and Embiid, but just in general, the, the progression from Embiid's career to where they are right now, and I know you're getting ready to face off against them, but you still pay attention. What are your thoughts on this team? Yeah, I think it's safe if I give you the scouting report. You know, <laughs> some NBA teams <laughs> may not be like this, but I think it's safe. No, I'm really excited for this season. I mean, obviously, as a Philly guy, I hate seeing Boston win. Uh, you know, I'm friends with a lot of guys up there, Austin Ainge. And, um, you know, I've got the relationships everywhere because of our next stars and our young guys. But I'd be lying if I wasn't like, oh, my God, I got to watch Boston win another championship. So I tell think me about be, it, man. It's yeah, terrible. Oh, I, know, I know we're all speaking the same language here. And, you know, sometimes I have to act like I've got no allegiances. But look, I'm a Philly guy. I grew up watching the Sixers talking about some of those old guys. I think with the new big three. Um, I think they've got a real chance. I, you know, I was really excited to, I know you guys are down there in Bahamas, but see that Joel Embiid is talking about like, look, the whole focus this year is getting through the postseason, And obviously that's been an issue for the Sixers is that the talent's been there, but for some reason we've kind of run out of gas. And I still say we, even though I'm going against you guys, because like I said, I'm a Philly guy. But um, I think when you can go in your off season and you add a guy like Paul George, what else can you ask? And uh, I think the ownership's done a really good job investing in the club. Um, so I'm excited. Uh, I think they've got a real chance. My biggest thing, you know, if I'm the Sixers going into this season is that uh, while the focus is going to be the, the postseason, it's how do you position yourself best in the regular season so that we don't have to go on the road for two or three rounds. So, you know, I know that's always a balance and with rest nowadays, but, you know, if I'm the Sixers, I'm thinking, okay, how do we get two or three, you know, home rounds because as we all know Philly has the best fan base in the entire country it is the the big challenge right where now because Boston is way up there because the Knicks have now positioned themselves as they have all this talent you want to make sure you're judicious with Joel but then on the other hand it's like if you can't keep pace with those guys you go into round two you got to go play if you play seven games you got to go to either one of the gardens Four different exactly. times and win at least one or two of those more than likely. So, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting challenge. It's something we talk about not just all off season, but today. You know, we're talking to Joel about kind of his approach to the the long term and even just training camp where he's not in scrimmages right now because they're treating him as more of the uh, the red shirt quarterback. Just like, hey, <laughs> nobody can touch him. He's over by himself, and uh, we'll worry about getting you up to speed when it's it's really go time yeah it's interesting uh you know we don't we don't have that challenge because we we have 29 regular season games this year they added one from 28 and every game matters so much it's a totally different game i can't imagine managing 82 games and and to your point you know probably you know i'm not sure that they would say this publicly but i think probably the most the thing that's most important for the sixers and what they'd say is Let's just get Joel and everyone healthy for this, even if we have to go on the road. Um, kind of like that Miami Heat mentality, like when we're all good, we can beat anyone anywhere. But it's tough, man. Like you said, the two gardens, if you have to go in there and win four, you know, total four out of seven, it just makes it a bunch harder. So, you know, they have the best sports science people in the world. They, they know what they're doing. Um, but I would, what, what I would love to see is a selfish Sixers fan. And I won't be a Sixers fan Monday, but if, otherwise – I would just love to see us be healthy, you know, get a two or three seed and really give it a good run. Because like I said, man, everyone knows when you get to, to the postseason in Philly, there's absolutely nothing like it. I don't care. Like I've been everywhere. I've seen everything. There's nothing like the, the Sixers or the Phillies or the Eagles when, when they're rolling in the postseason. Final one, man. Um, getting ready for, for, for this and, seeing how the game is played now with your shooting ability that, that you had, of course, that took you from Germantown Academy to Florida. And uh, again, all the years that you played professionally, you would really thrive in today's game with that outside shooting and, and the way that the three point volume is, the amount of threes are, are put up. How, how do you like how the game is being played now? I love it. Obviously, like as a guy who could make some shots, I think about that a lot, but, I'll be honest, man. I would have spent like 10 years at Florida if there was NIL money. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You know back, back in the day when they were giving out my headbands and Halloween costumes yep. and stuff, they would have had to drag me out of there. But at the same time, 
if I was making a million bucks a year in Gainesville going to the grog house in the swamp, I don't know if we're talking right now. So <laughs> I'm very thankful that it all <laughs> it's a good time to be a young basketball player. But no, the modern game, I mean, I think about back when I played even, which is not too long ago, even though I am getting old, like shooting uh, threes off the dribble even or, you know, ISO threes was considered like, oh, man, that's a bad shot. And now if you can get yeah. a three off with a good look, you know, it's threes and free throws and getting to the rim. Uh, that, that certainly would have suited me because uh, yeah, that's what I did. I, I lived behind the three-point line. Absolutely. Well, listen, man, we really appreciate you taking some time, hanging out with us uh, ahead of this game. And uh, everybody, if you see Matt in the building, make sure you say hello. The curls are not there, but the, you'll see a group of family and friends around them as they uh, get ready for this game. Matt Walsh, thanks so much for joining us here on the show. And I'll, I'll check in with you and we'll try to catch up on Monday. I appreciate it, guys. This was a lot of fun. We all city like the mayor. 